Hey, okay, people of the internet, and welcome to your t another tutorial in programming games and SDL and OpenGL and C++. So today is going to be your first tutorial, mainly focused ab around the logic in the game than the actual graphical part. This is a really, really important part of logic that you're going to need to learn here, and it's collision detection. And it sounds, it sounds like really horrific and advanced. Well, it probably doesn't. You guys are probably just laughing. Uh, but when I first started, I, th I thought this would be really hard and advanced, but it's actually so, so easy. So, we're going to start off by using our mouse X and mouse Y that we made last time to make a simple square that's going to follow the mouse. So, we're going to make, we're just going to disable. In fact, let's just, uh, we're not going to be using textures this t uh, time, so let's go to our initialize function. Where is it? And we're going to completely remove that, so we don't have to mess with that. So we're going to say gl color 3f. Just make this a red. And then, if you don't know how to do this, go back and watch my previous tutorials. I'm just going to quickly try and get through all of this. Quads, gl end. Then we need to put our vertexes in. What the program is going to basically do is when the box following the mouse touches a box we're going to draw in the center, um, it's going to it's going to shine up with or su some kind of input saying collision. So I'm going to say mouse set height plus 25. We're going to make it a relatively small box. Mouse Y so X plus 25, plus Y plus 25. If you don't want to have to go through all of these really annoying, difficult bits, just have to write out a ton of code, you can just go in the description. Every single tutorial I do, the source code should be in the description. If there's any issues with the source code, say it's not for the right episode, just let me know. I do have a little bit of difficulty organizing all the source codes that I have. It's a bit annoying. So let's just quickly compile and run this. It's always good to do this as you go to make sure you've got no errors because you don't want to be plowing on doing more when you're going to be getting errors. Some people, you see like these coding boffs who will just like do it all and they'll have no errors whatsoever. But it's better to go back and check than to try to be a buff. So there you go. It's for some reason a little bit laggy. Might be because I'm recording with Hypercam. It seems to have got a bit better now. You see, it's not perfectly following the mouse. That's due to we've limited to 60 frames, and if we even if we didn't, it still wouldn't follow it perfectly. But that's that's absolutely fine for now. We can get on to fixing that later, later tutorials. So now we're going to draw our main. Yeah, our main. Uh. You call it square. <laughs> so we're going to make two new floats next to go with these x and y's that we declared earlier. Going to put width and height. Okay. And actually, what we're actually going to do we're going to copy this out again, and we're going to make mouse width and mouse height. That's just basically going. What we're going to do is we're going to set these both to 25. And then we're just going to uh, replace these x values we declared. So mouse width. You'll see why we're doing this. Why we're placing these with variables. You can just keep these as numbers for later on in the tutorial. I'm just doing it because it's a more efficient way of doing it. There we go. So now we need to draw a, a quad that's going to be a different color to start off with. So we're going to call the color 3f again. And this one will be a green. And then we're going to make some more quads. Ah, come on. Actually, we don't need to do that, do we? <laughs> we can just put it in the same statement. We just uh, move the end. There we go. So we're going to put geo vertex to ref. So, uh, OpenGL or SGL, neither of them have a, an inbuilt collision detection. 
I think SDL has something similar with its rects. You, I'm not sure if it does at all. Um, but I think I've heard that it does somewhere. But we're going to cover doing it our own way because you know it's cool. Um, so now we're going to draw our square in the middle of the screen to make it X and Y. X plus width. We did call it width, didn't we? I hope so because it's not coming from my suggestions. X plus width, Y plus height. What did we call it then? Because that didn't. Oh, we did call it width, okay. It's just that I sometimes get a bit annoyed when it's not coming from my suggestions. So we're going to say Y equals height. So now I've got that square drawn, we actually need to uh, make these values something, I suppose, don't we? That would help. We're just going to make this 50 and 50 that way. Now we're going to make these equal to 50. So we're going to compile and run this and make sure we've got these all drawn out and our variables are working correctly on the squares. Then we can move on to detecting collision between these two. Okay, and there we go. Um, yep, the box is there. I, I should probably should have made it a bit bigger. But uh, as you can see, because you render the... Uh, mouse one first, it goes behind the box maybe that's not exactly what we want let's just uh, switch these around there we go, oh we've missed off a G ok so we've got that all set up again and now we're going to actually get on to uh, our collision detection so we're, for the sake of doing it we're going to make a, a, a uh, the, a boolean method uh, and this is going to take a hell of a lot of parameters but the uh, good thing about this is it's going to be able to declare a collision between two quads no matter how big or high they high they are so it's we're going to be able to pass parameters in and get an accurate boolean of whether they've uh, actually collided so we're going to take a float yep we will need to actually change all of these to floats I think they are floats already actually though aren't they um, Yes, they are apart from mouse X and mouse Y. We'll just change them to floats. Nice. Just quickly build that. I'm not going to compile and run. Just build it to make sure. Okay, right. We actually are going to need an integer for that. So, not an issue. We we'll just declare all of these as integers. Then it doesn't matter. All we need to make sure is that uh, we don't even need to make sure of that. But we need to make sure that it would be really helpful if they were all like the same value. So we're going to say int x. We're going to call it x1 because we're going to take two. Int x2. Int. We're going to say w1 for width one. In fact, we don't want x2 there, do we? we want y1. Int h1. So this is going to take the x and y position and the height and width of our first square. We're going to do the exact same. Except we're going to stick two on the end of everything. Width two, width two, and height two. Okay, so now we've got all our parameters in. It's a, it's a bit big, I know, but I'll have to go with that. So what we're going to do now is the complicated part. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off by putting in quite a few statements in. I'm going to put if y one I'm just trying to think this through if y one add h one is less than y two return false. So if basically what it's saying is if you imagine this as the uh, y position of it plus the height which is basically the very bottom of the square because of the you know the x axis the y axis is inverted. If the y position of the mouse square is bigger than that, okay it's below it, we're gonna return false. But we're gonna to need to put four more of these uh to detect it. So we're gonna say now if so if the collision of this one of the collisions. <laughs> this is so hard to explain. It really is. Uh, so if the the y position of that collision 
is bigger than y2 plus h2 we're going to also return false so basically we're doing the exact opposite of what we want to do here we are detecting if we're not touching it and we're going to return true if we are why did I just put two if statements in between these things so now we're going to say <coughs> sorry I've got a bit of a dry throat I should have got some water um, if x1 plus width 1 is smaller than ew, this is really annoying difficult um, there we go we're going to return false if um, x1 is bigger than x2 plus width 2 <laughs> once you've got this uh, function set up you can just copy and paste it through whatever um, programs you ever design you want to because you know you don't have to program everything out every single time but if not we're going to if none of these are true then we're going to return true if that makes sense so if if we're not if we're not not touching it it's going to return true which is basically what this uh, thing is going to do then that rhymed I should be a poet so now we're going to create an if statement here and if collision, so we're going to pass in our function and we're going to pass it the millions of parameters it needs yeah it doesn't matter whether you put the uh, the mouse square first or the normal square first it will still collect it will, yeah, it will still detect collision and throat is really dry mouse y mouse width mouse height so if that is coll collided then let's I don't know let's render a bitmap string at 100 150 saying collision in all caps because it's a caps radio um and I think we are good to go so let's try this out okay we're going to get a couple of errors here that needs to be width one instead of WX got a little bit confused there mm. sometimes it's good to name your parameters a little bit better than I've done there because it was a little bit weird of me to name them like that so obviously you can get this horrific lag for some reason Ooh. for some reason that seems to have made, made them disappear but we are getting a collision that's that's definitely for sure um, and why would, why would it be doing that? Um, is this something to do with under pit map string? I do not know. Hmm, this is really weird. Oh, of course, it's because after this we re enable them. Um, I'm not going to get rid of them, I'm just going to comment that out. And I'm going to also comment the disables in the first place. If you're just like playing about, it's good to comment stuff out so that you can come back to it later and, and put it back in. It's really easy, just put two dashes in front of it and then becomes a comment and it's not actually using the program. Okay, let's do this now. Collision. Collision. Let's test this from all sides. Collision, collision. So yeah, actually, luckily for me, this does actually seem to have worked out fine. So yeah, this is only going to be on actually detecting collision, not not handling collision. We'll get onto that another day. Because it all depends on how we want to handle the collision. But yeah, thank you for watching. This has been your night tutorial in programming games, and I hope to see you next time.